Support my content by becoming a patron on patreon.com backslash music. Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of Anime Podcasters. Today I am joined with my amazing ginger co-host. Hot shot. How's it going, buddy? It's going. It's going fine. I am fine. Are you fine? I hope you're fine. No, you're not. I hope not. I am very happy, but you should be happier because this is the topic you chose last podcast. Uh, <laughs> that you had, you had plenty of time to make a decision, and you made it on the spot one for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, the topic today is anime couples. So that's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, anything you to report, Hotshot? Anything going good before we jump into this? Nothing is going good. Nothing is going bad. I do have one thing to say after this podcast, but I will be saving it for after the podcast. Okay. Um, so you're going to let the fans know you're quitting after. Okay, I, I get that. I yeah, get exactly. That. <laughs> so that way they have one final good memory of me before I'm gone forever. Yes. All right. So let's get into this topic. We're talking about anime couples Hotshot, what went into your list? Uh, we're basically going to be choosing three anime couples each. What went into your couples uh, that you would decide? Are these romantic couples? Are these dynamic duos? Like, how did you interpret this? I kind of have a healthy mix of both, honestly. There's team members. There's, like, romantic couples. There's people who hate each other but can't help but like them together kind of couples. But I mainly tried sticking with the romantic side just because when I hear couples instead of duos, that's what I hear. But there is at least one duo in in my list, like one tag team duo in there. Cool, cool. Uh, for myself, I went for uh, this is like all romantic, like uh, if not romantic, quasi romantic. Uh, ver- like the every relationship here is marked with uh, some type of romance in uh, my list, and I guarantee you that you do not have a single one of my picks. I can say that at the top of the podcast for sure. I did not pick anyone from Dragon Ball, Naruto, or My Hero Academia, and that's basically everything Hotshot knows. I mean, be that as it may, you don't just have to up and say it. Oh, 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 well, I can't wait to hear your Naruto, Dragon Ball, and My Hero Academia <laughs> pick. Now that's just uncalled for. <laughs> just I'm screwing around. Would you like me to go first, or would you like to go first? I feel kind I'd of like bad. you to go first because I just don't want to give you the dignity of being right. From being okay, I'm take my first pick is from Naruto. I thought you just said. Just said what? What are you talking about? Fine, say it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. My my first pick is not from Naruto. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I'm serious. All right, my first pick is from Terror and Resonance. Oh, I think I know who. Okay, guess. Shit, I can't remember the numbers. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you five main characters. You right. got Shibazaki. Okay. You got Lisa. Then you have five, nine, and twelve. I really hope it's nine and Lisa, but I think it's nine and twelve or five and twelve. No, no, it's twelve and Lisa. Twelve, 12 and Lisa. And Lisa. Okay. Like Yes, I the one who 12. looks like the one who looks like me and Lisa is the one I was trying to say. Twelve is not a ginger. Twelve will never be a ginger. Do not even. Okay, one detail. <laughs> one major detail. You can't help but deny that like twelve looks like me and five looks like you. Uh, sure, no. Yeah, not oh, at no. all. <laughs> so twelve and Lisa uh, are. Two of my favorite characters in uh, Zanki no Terror. And why do I really... In- why did I- am I picking uh, 12 and Lisa? Um, so basically, uh, from the first episode on, we see very quickly that 9 is uh, very distant with uh, Lisa. Very cool with her. But uh, 12, who's got the same background as 9, being part of the Athena plan. Um, the first time we ever seen def- develop some sort of warmth in... Um, what uh, with with another human being is uh, Lisa, and they develop this romantic relationship between the two, and it's a uh, it's so cute, and it's just I, it's so perfect in my opinion. Um, I think it's too perfect in the sense that like twelve goes as far as betraying nine to save Lisa in the Ferris wheel, which I will be honest gives a great 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 scene, but um. Like, at first, it definitely seems like they have, like, a bit of a flirty playing around thing, but they do develop, like, a very strong bond, and um, they're extremely empathetic towards each other. You see that Lisa cares for uh, 12 and 12 cares for Lisa. perfect example of this would be the final episode with the ex- final explosion, and just looking at the explosion together, holding hands. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous scene. Uh, and um, I just 
Loved, loved, loved this bond that they had. Obviously, Hotshot, this is an anime that you've watched, so you can comment on this. Uh, what are your thoughts? This one I can comment on, and... Okay, it is 12, right? That's his number, 12? 12. Okay. 12, honestly, was the best part of the show for me, except for Lisa. So the two favorite characters of mine, I can completely see the... The relationship between between them, I can see the drive between them. Even though 12 just kind of gives off the, oh, by the way, if you talk, you're dead kind of vibe. But does so in such a playful manner and eventually leads to him actually caring about Lisa and him wanting to protect Lisa. Like, basically, she's safer with them than against them or, like, no witness kind of thing. So what starts from that, but then what feels like an actual romantic relationship that honestly is what made me break the most when i got to the ending of the show because if you guys haven't heard our podcast on it or spoilers or uh seen it yourself or anything then spoilers but when 12 gets shot and killed i immediately thought of like him and lisa instead of like his connection to himself in five yeah yeah definitely um i just felt like uh lisa being uh, the bully child that she is and uh, the family struggles that she goes through. Uh, 12, for me, uh, felt like he gave her a reason to live almost. Yeah. Um, and also, um, obviously, Lisa, not as much than 12, but they're both troubled teenagers. They both have their baggage. I mean, yeah, one blows term. stuff up and the other one is constantly bullied and ridiculed. You know what I mean, though? Like One of these the things is thing. not like the other. <laughs> it's not the same thing, but they both have a lot to like work through yeah which and is why i think comfort each other which is why i think 12 like took a shining to her in the first place like he saw that much of like their own trouble past in her like basically someone else who's suffering not in the same level obviously but someone who's suffering like they are yes exactly and another thing too i want to say like 12 risks everything for lisa and i just i love that scene in the first period where lisa's just like leave me alone like i'm gonna die like no no and then 12 just grabs her by the the, the cheeks and she he's like no we're getting through this together i care about you lisa and it's it, it makes me like just it made me emotional it just it, it's just such a beautiful bond that had to be highlighted on this podcast and i i really felt like it developed the human side of 12 that he very much does not have at the beginning but we see come more uh into play in comparison to nine because obviously nine and 12 are uh mirror each other and don't mirror each other throughout the anime yeah. um so yeah that that well, go ahead no i was saying yeah i was just nodding and agreeing with you no for sure and the final point like they just they make each other happy they just do um and, even even like, with all the crap that both of them go through and plus the situation like that like lisa being aware that they're the terrorist group like it's a th this whole dynamic is so screwed up but they still like have like emotional cutie bond this cutie bond together i'm just i am i'm blown away by it yeah <laughs> yeah. No, I, so, I I do completely agree. Like again, twelve and twelve and Lisa were my favorite characters from this, so I can completely agree with you there. Right on. All right, uh, Hotcha, that's everything I had to say on twelve and Lisa. Uh, go ahead and uh, give me your first pick. Okay, so you still think that I only know Dragon Ball and Naruto and Soul Eater and basically all of the animes that you listed, right? Right. Yeah. Say if you're right or if you're or if I'm wrong. I will say Black Star. Okay, cool. So my first couple pick is actually from the anime. My girlfriend is a gal. Whoa, whoa! I never heard of that. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't. No. I'm doing that. No, you can't. I'm doing no, no, that. You, you can't. I'm doing that. You, you're not. No, I'm. You don't. I have you watched this? I'm, you haven't watched this. I'm. You I, haven't watched it. I've watched You're it. Watch it. I've watched it. You. How many episodes? Seven. <laughs> you sounded so unconvinced. Like. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I've, my I've seen is it. A gal? I've seen it. Yes, my girlfriend is a gal, and I'm picking. Go ahead. I'm picking the main couple of Junichi and Yukana. And yes, I am saying them slowly because I completely am trash on Japanese names, so I actually had to look them up. <laughs> but anyway, huh. Junichi st so he starts the anime by wanting a girlfriend, wanting more than anything to have a girlfriend, but he talks with his buddies that are just like 
Kyo said when we went into the show that though that his three friends are the worst anime characters that we've really seen, and I'm not gonna explain them because I agree with that. But they eventually trick him and convince him to confess feelings to Yukana. Surprising all of them, she takes him up on it. But here's the thing: what starts off as a complete shot in the dark, like just basically what they thought was a pity date or a pity like dating or like a popular girl dating an unpopular guy for oh hey look who i'm with like that kind of thing it turns into it actually turns into a sweet romance like there's actual um interactions between the two of them that they obviously start caring about each other they like want to learn more about each other um there's even one place where uh or on their first date they go to a karaoke karaoke bar and in order to make Junichi feel better, Yukana picks an anime opening song, knowing that yeah, sorry, I'm getting a lot of slobber here. Knowing that Junichi All knows good. knowing that Junichi knows those, she did that for him. Like even when he was like too forward on approach or anything like that, like trying to kiss her kind of thing. Like she just makes up an excuse, slips away, but still gives him the benefit of the doubt and still continues to date him. Like there is there is a building, again, I haven't finished the show, shocker, but from what I have seen, there is a building and lasting, what seems to be a lasting relationship between the two of them. Like, it actually feels like real chemistry between them. Wow, okay, okay. So, this is this is very interesting to me, because it feels like there is, like, it, it, this one has more of a build-up, is what I'm understanding, between these two. Yeah, because they start off just, like, on regular, like, hey, I kind of know your name, classmates kind of thing. Like, she's the popular uh, girl who doesn't really think twice about it, and he's the unpopular guy who obviously knows her because she's, like, the hottest and most popular girl in the school. So he knows her on the grounds that her name and she's hot, but she doesn't really know him, (laughs) and completely out of the blue agrees to go out with him. So that's how it starts, and then just builds from that. That's really funny. That's actually really funny. Like, again, it is one of those animes that are more my taste. Like, it's it's an etchy anime, so there's lewd jokes, lewd innuendos, lewd scenes, stuff like that. But... Of course there would be! But, of course but, there but, would be! But, no, no, no. but, I, but... I do not see any other way of this going down than that be included on the podcast. But, 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 but... However, however, however... It's not Naruto, it's not Dragon Ball, and it's not Soul Eater. So it's another anime that I know. Damn. I'm and impressed. I have purchased Hotshot, the a- set of. I'm impressed. Hotshot, I do almost apologize. Do you almost apologize? Yes. You know what? I'll take it, because I think that's the best I'm going to get. No, it's not. Trust me. Okay, cool. Do you got anything else? The The best you're going to get is my next pick. All right, who? This is Hotshot's favorite anime. I don't care what he says. He picked this anime in the Greatest Anime ba- Battles podcast. He picked the mental battle between L and Light Yagami. So I know deep down inside in his ginger heart, he loves Death Note. He just doesn't want to admit it on the podcast. And I, I get it, Hotshot. I get it. I get okay, it. Okay, if, if, if you want, no, no. I will give you a 100% clean thought process confession on my thoughts on Death Note. Right now? Right now. Go ahead. After you say your next pick. <laughs> okay, so um, I am picking the bond between Misa Amane and Rem. Uh, it's going to be my next pick. I actually just decided to put this one in instead of... Uh, I was going to pick Asuna and Kirito, but I, 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 I just changed my mind just right now. Um, I prefer discussing this one because it's just one that's more interesting to me. Because like to me, Asuna and Kirito, yes, obviously, beautiful, loving relationship that they have through Tora Online. But... Uh, there's this thing with uh, how how it ends with Rem and, and Misa is just gorgeous because there's this rule that a Shinigami uh, can be killed if it decides to extend the life of someone that they love. Um, so they can die by falling in love if they kill... Because uh, there was a, a thing where uh, basically uh, Rem died because Elle was going to find out that Misa was a second Kira and then she, uh, Rem writes down Elle's name and Rem dies because she was in love with... Misa, and it's it was this thing where uh, Rem is a very emotional um, Shinigami that basically gives uh, Misa uh, the second death the, the second death note that comes into play here in Death Note, and uh, Misa is this ditzy, uh, gorgeous anime 
uh, girl who has a, a lot of charisma uh, that falls in love with y Light Yagami, and Rem knows that Light Yagami is, is basically uh, using uh, Misa as a means to an end, and Rem loves Misa and will do anything she can to protect Misa. Uh, as far as even writing Light's name down if he kills uh, Misa uh, after Misa gives uh, Light her death note. And I just really thought that, uh, m that Rem and Misa had this bond that... Uh, not necessarily unbreakable, but you knew that uh, one was way more into the other. You know, like, Misa obviously cared about Rem, but, like, will never love Rem as much as Rem loved Misa. And it was a, just a beautiful uh, way uh, to go out, in my opinion. Like, dying by love like that was just uh, a very artistic and well-constructed uh, narrative. At the same time, also, Lisa, to me, uh, was just such an airhead and just did not have much to her character. And it was kind of like that thing where I wish more female characters in anime had, like, more... Uh, umph, where like they just don't like fall for the guy, and then that said they don't contribute to too much. Like she, Misa does contribute, but I felt like it was it's just once again as a mean to an end for Light Yagami. But Rem just provided this other layer to uh, Misa's character, where you're like, wow, what's so great about Misa that Rem is just doing anything for her? So to me, this is like definitely a, a bond that's worth discussing on the podcast. Uh, so Hotshot, go ahead. Go ahead with what? What am I doing? Anything. Uh, your thoughts. Let's start with your thoughts on what I just discussed. I mean, I can completely see. The, I can completely see the pull to it, especially if it's more of a not a romantic pull, but a I want to protect this. I want to protect her. Or I want. I want to protect them. Like that kind of drive to it. And for Shinigami to feel that way about about their hostess, I guess you can call them or reader. What do you call the person uh, who has the death note? Human. They're human. Uh, death death note wielder. Death Note Wielder. <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. Basically, a Shinigami caring about their human. That's what, just what I'm going to say, with. It just has that much of a Death Note Wielding it. Human. Death Note Wielding Human. For a Shinigami to care <laughs> about their Death Note Wielding Human. <laughs> How to tongue twist Hot Shot on a podcast 101. Ah. <laughs> it, actually, it actually says a lot about like the Shinigami in general. Because we all know Ryuk doesn't give a crap about light. He just wants him to... <laughs> He, we, he, we all just know that he wants him no, to give him no. a good time. He gives a crap about the apples that Light has. Therefore, he somewhat, somehow but, gives no, a he bit of a crap about No, light. he tolerates Light. He just thinks he's the only source of apples. <laughs> so if he could grow an old apple tree, he would kill Light himself. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't. Stop it. Stop. My point being is that Rem cares about Misa. <laughs> Ryuk doesn't give a Fuck about light. True. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. But, and you said you had like a, 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 your honest, clear take on Death Note. Was that it? I did. No, my honest, clear take on Death Note is I can appreciate the mystery. I can appreciate the drama. I can appreciate the tension, the detective skills of L, the slithering around of light. I can appreciate the Shinigami and the Death Note and the powers of them. I can appreciate the mind battle between... Uh, mass killer light and detective l but i can't get into watching the show myself for me it just as a show it just goes too slow it doesn't really pull me into the world itself as a viewer but the universe itself like if i'm just talking about death note i'm totally fine i can completely see the appeal in the pull to it if i'm watching death note i just get bored and switch something else and I mean, I feel like we've discussed this many times on the podcast. But thank you for bringing it up and again. Yes. However, however, if I'm watching Death Note, that's how I feel. If I'm reading the manga, that's something else. This is not manga podcasters. This is anime podcasters. We don't read manga. We hey, watch anime. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where does anime come from? Where does most anime come from? Japan. Oh my god! Did you really just give that answer? <laughs> I mean, yes, but <laughs> thank you. My pick! My turn! You picked! Yeah, I pick again. I get a fourth extra pick. You don't get a fourth right. extra pick? I'm your co-host. <laughs> Show me some respect! <laughs> your turn, Hotshot. My turn. And guess what? It's still not Dragon Ball or Death Note or Naruto. <laughs> Or I feel like we started with either Naruto, Death, uh, Naruto Dragon Ball, or My Hero Academia, and then it switched to Naruto Dragon Ball or Soul Leader, and now it's Dragon Ball Naruto or Death. Well, Ball. basically, you it's all the, the basically no, no, you it's keep all, you keep changing the third anime like every time. <laughs> it's basically the ones that you know that I know that I need to get out so that you know that I know them because you don't know that I know this one and I know this one 
a fair deal. <laughs> Go ahead, okay. my friend. My next pick is from Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Is it? That is the actual name of the anime. But is it? It is. Okay. And the couple I'm picking is kind of a one-sided relationship, but I'm picking it anyway because I love them together, is Belle and Hestia. Okay, I don't know this one as well, once again, but please enlighten me with your supreme ginger anime lo- knowledge. So you guys know Sword Art Online, right? Yeah. It's that. It's not. It, what? It's not. It's, it, not. It, it's basically treated like, so there's adventurers and familias, so basically like adventurers and their guilds, and it treats it like your stats level up and stuff like that with better equipment, better skills. So Bell is in Hestia's familia. But the only thing is, he's the only one in her familia. Now, I'm not entirely sure why, because, again, this is one that I haven't seen a whole lot of. But I do love what I have seen, and I've seen... I've seen a fair deal. I've seen about six or seven episodes, same with Girl... or Girlfriend's a Gal. But it's just kind of, uh... Like, Hestia honestly does fall in love with Belle, and you can clearly see it. Though, it's just kind of a playful, like we're roommates kind of thing. Like, they brush their teeth together. They do everything together. It's just when Belle starts showing um, interest in a girl in another familia that Hestia starts having, like, basically tsundere level jealousy, I guess you can call it. Like, or not tsundere, sorry. She basically comes against, like, any other female in Belle's path, but does it in such a way that's more cute than aggravating. So, basically, he's too oblivious to get that she loves him. Oh, my God. Really? Really. Is this what's happening again? This is what's happening again. I feel like this has been like a, a uh, arc, a relationship, whatever development that you want, whatever you want to call it, death, no, A cliche human. of anime? Yeah, this is so cliche, Hotshot. And what? I don't get where you're picking a cliche. I'm picking a cliche because, yes, it is a trope that has been done before. But at the- So s- many times. So many times. Like, more times- The than- horse is dead. And you keep picking the same horse. Yeah, Stop kicking the same Because we have to cut it in and dig inside and get inside because it's getting cold outside. But it's like April now. It's so cold. Okay, whatever. Welcome to Washington. You were saying? <laughs> anyway. You were saying? I was saying that the reason I'm picking it, even though it is a cliche, is because Hestia is like that much of an endearing character. Like, yes, some people will say she's annoying, but... Just giving me more to edit, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> but... She does it in such a way that, like, you can kind of get what it's coming from. It's basically like a... Belle is the first person to ever actually show her any affection or attention. And now he's being taken away from her by, like, others. So it's just kind of a jealousy, like, protect your territory kind of thing. Because he's her familia. She is literally all that she has. So, okay. So like so, she she has another angle why she's acting that way. Okay. So clearly the, this one sidedness is basically the the nucleus of this is the reason why the the bond is the way it is. It's a very strong bond. Like they do both love each other. He just loves her as his goddess and uh his goddess and very close friend. And he's clearly way more into her than she's into him, right? No, she's into him way more. Oh, okay. So I, I missed that around. So, she's clearly more into him than he's into her. Yes. Which is basically the nucleus of the... Like, this is what makes the dynamics what it is. Yes. Is what I'm trying to get at. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to understand this. Well, I, I've been understanding it. I'm understanding it more. This is understood. It's understood? Yes. Okay. And since you said you don't know what this one is, I do recommend you watch it because it is a it is a fantasy-inspired anime and fantasy with like some game aspects in it that i absolutely adore i had no idea you watched all these animes and i'm always like watch more anime but like and i'm trying to feel like i didn't watch enough anime stop making me feel non-weeb <laughs> <laughs> all right uh was there anything else you wanted to s- i hate you so much you wanted to say i got i got nothing more on that one now you're gonna okay. hate my last so, pick by the way is it really black star just go no no wait 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 it's not just go. No, 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 no. Don't pick don't pick Black Star. Just go on your final pick. Don't don't pick. I will go. But do not. Do not pick. Do not pick Black Star. Okay? We're good? Fine. Just this What's just your last pick? So uncomfortable. Okay. But in all seriousness, my last pick, I am picking from Attack on Titan. Don't you dare Armin. pick Armin. 
Armin and no, I'm kidding. I'm picking Eren and Mikasa. Thank honestly. you for actually having some fucking common sense. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I really hope I, I didn't pick Armin. You better not pick. You better not pick Black Star. I get I give you a pass. I give you a solid pass, bro. <laughs> How did you give me a pass? No! Do not pick Black Star. In all seriousness, uh Armin is not in this, but in this trio, uh I mean, uh I think I think But it's not trio, Mikasa it's couple. Has so yeah, I know. And then I think what, yeah, well, I was just trying to explain the dynamic. I was, I'm getting to my point. Don't rush me. Um, in this trio that is Armin, Eren, and Mikasa, uh, the bond that is romantic in there is clearly Eren and Mikasa. Um, I find that uh, it's weird because this bond is like, it, it starts with a friendship where uh, early on Mikasa is always protecting Eren and she almost acts like a bit of a mother for Eren where she takes care of him. She destroys the bullies that, that beat him. He's reckless. He She makes up for that recklessness because she's, like, super physically adept. Uh, whatever happens whenever Eren gets captured, who's the first person to try to get Eren back? Mikasa. We saw that with the Colossal Titan. We saw that with uh, the Colossal Titan and the Armored Titan. Uh, we saw that in Season 3. Th in season three, when uh, Aaron, uh, the more I watch Attack on Titan, the more I just realize it's Aaron getting captured because he has he can transform into a Titan. That's that's what that's what Attack on Titan is. It's still good, but it, like it's the basically point is, the retrieved Mikasa, Sasuke arc over and over and over again <laughs> and over and over and over again. Uh, but in all seriousness, like Mikasa is just there for uh, Aaron every step of the way, and. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I do, I do think they kiss at the end of season two. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil, but uh, I'm not gonna say what the circumstances. Like, oh wow, two characters kiss. It's not that big of a spoiler. Um, but I, I still like, I love their bond, and uh, it's, it's one where I, I think they, they complete each other very well, and it's one where you know, it's not just kind of these two people who struck up a relationship uh, and they randomly just kind of work, it worked out. Like these people have been together from the get go all the way. We're like. Uh, Mikasa was there, and oh, she 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 remembers Aaron saying, "Fight, fight, fight! Just fight, fight!" And she kills the people who captured Aaron. Uh, just early on, a lot of a lot of like tied these two together. So I absolutely love these uh, these together. And obviously, you've watched some Attack on Titan, so you know what I'm talking about. I actually have watched Attack on Titan, but I'm actually picking up on the scenes that you're talking about through the games because the games actually go through the core of the story. Okay, gotcha. So, thoughts? On just Mikasa and Eren, or just everything that you were going on? Whatever you want, man. Okay. With Mikasa and Eren, like, I mean, one reason that they... You're you're right, because one reason that they're so close is because they did grow up together. Eren's family took Mikasa in, and they grew up living together. With Eren still being reckless, and Mikasa still having to be the grown-up adult one... And eventually developing into, obviously, a romantic connection. But just like my last pick, it's very one-sided. Eren very clearly isn't romantically involved with Mikasa. Although that's all Mikasa wants. A little wants. bit. A little bit. A little bit, but nowhere near as much as Mikasa is for Eren. Like, you... you, true, you true. Yeah, okay, you can't really fault that one. But... At the same time, like, they both have their faults and they both use them at the same time. Like, Mikasa babies Eren too much and gets caught up in saving him too much. Whereas Eren gets too reckless and wants to basically slaughter every titan no matter what gets in his way without thinking. But the two of them together, whether it's friendship or romantic, definitely makes for a good dy uh, dynamic. It really does make for a good dynamic. And uh, what I love is that uh, Mikasa early on when she finds out that like Eren has a, has uh, this power to transform into a Titan, she just understands like this is what we need for humanity. And together they join and they form a part of the Levi squad. And they really uh, share this bond that like dictates how humanity is going to go uh, through. And like at the end of season three, part one, uh, there's a scene where uh, Mikasa is about to kill Levi because uh, we see Levi like not being happy with Eren. It's just, but Armin, just, like, Armin just... stops her, I believe, right? Oh my god, not Armin, Levi, Levi. Okay, the scene is Levi, uh, Eren, and uh, Mikasa. Uh, Levi is mad with uh, Eren and like hurts him, and like Mikasa's there, like about to kill Levi for doing that. Like she's. Always on it, and oh, I, I, I just love that. Like, I was thinking of the kick scene. Sorry, no, no, no. That that's another epic scene. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All good. All good. Um, but I just oh, I just th this bond is is one that I will always, always, always respect, and I find that there is a there's just this element that it's it's gonna be romantic at some point. It just has to. 
Do it for us. Japan, you heard him. The Canadian yes. demands right. romance. <laughs> uh, make it happen for your last pick. Okay, okay. Just don't. Just don't, right? So my final pick... Oh, my God. ...is from Soul Eater. Oh, no, 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 no. And it is indeed Black Star and Tsubaki. No, are you serious? I'm serious. No, no, you're not serious. I'm, seri- no, okay. I'm serious. Uh, hot shot, hot shot, hot shot, hot shot, hot shot. What? Hot shot. What? No. Why? No. Why? Because we don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like you. <laughs> Why don't you like me right now? I'm picking an honest Be- pick. You're not picking an honest pick. This is what happened. We were like, oh, giant foot, uh, giant sprung it up on me in the last podcast to pick a topic. Okay, I remembered how anime couples. I didn't enjoy that. So how can I get payback? How can I get payback? I'm going to pick his least favorite character. Screw you. Okay, but you got to remember one specific thing here. That I'm right. No. And also that anime is from Japan. Okay, two things. One, <laughs> I am your co-host. And two... Uh-huh. You hate Black Star. I love Black Star. Uh-huh. I don't. I don't. I understand your point. My point so, is my picks, my rules. Yeah, but no, the, your picks don't rule. I think they. they I suck. think they do. Well, explain to me what's so great about Black Star. <laughs> okay, there's no reason to give Subaki that kind of treatment, though. <laughs> I really don't like you right now. I know. I don't like you either. But I'm picking Black Star and Tsubaki regardless. So I because don't. Because you fa- hate me. Because I hate you. And because. Ye- there. There. Finally. 55 episodes. It only took us this long to see it. Now I'm pretty sure everyone started seeing it like episode 7. Or whichever <laughs> episode you know I showed that- up in. <laughs> you know that episode I wasn't there. People knew it from then. You know Koala Cast <laughs> where you and Kyo talk shit behind my back. I don't know what you're talking about. No, yeah, no, not at all. (laughs) Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm picking Black Star in Tsubaki because, yes, Black Star is completely reckless, completely selfish, completely arrogant and stupid when we first dive into the show. I will fully admit that. And Su- Thank you. And Tsubaki is more of the motherly type that is just like basically how Mikasa is to Eren, but on a much more reserved level. She watches over Black Star. She basically tries instructing him on what to do and what not to do. Like a ninja doesn't burst out saying, I'm here to kill y'all. Like, no. So Tsubaki is always watching him and always guiding him. And as the show progresses... Black Star starts maturing more along with Tsubaki. And even in their first episode where Su- where Black Star has this chance, he has this chance to take a hundred corrupted souls and immediately make um Tsubaki eh, immediately make Tsubaki a death scythe right then and there. All he would need is one witch's soul, but he doesn't take it. He doesn't take it because he knows it's not the right thing to do, and because of his relationship with Tsubaki. But, I mean, plus that means he would probably have to give up his relationship with Tsubaki, like being partners with her. So with them going through, and there's one... Okay, so there is one great episode between the dynamic of them. There's an episode where Tsubaki has to go see her dead brother in a possessed sword. Stay with me. And Black Star does everything in his power to protect the sword that they're in. Even though the villagers hate the Star Clan, he leaves the sword, sits in front of it, and protects and shields Tsubaki in the sword while the villagers are literally beating him. So there is loyalty. There is mutual respect. There is an actual connection and friendship and relationship between the two of them. And Death even says himself that no soul resonance is quite as perfect as Black Star and Tsubaki's. Like, that's how in sync their souls are. I I know it's been a trope on this podcast of my hatred for Black Star. Mm -hmm. Do I still stand by it? Yes. You can you can still hate Black Star and I will still hate Armin. That is completely fine. However. Okay. Okay. However. Uh, when you're describing this bond, there is a dynamic here. There is a story. There is a strong relationship. And these two depend on one another so much throughout the anime and are able to pivot, bob and weave, and develop teamwork that is very powerful to get them through 
extremely challenging situations against evil people, against themselves. They, they you know, they, they have moments where they're there for one another, moments where they're not there for one another, and it's, it's, it's imperfect. And I like the imperfect type of relationship because there's always something that can crack. There's always something to work with. There's always something that can go wrong or go right. And so, uh, what this bond, uh, in my opinion, uh, represents is, uh, one that, how can I put this? One that really requires uh, hardship and love from, like, like, it covers, it goes from A to Z is what I feel like. And you have to, unfortunately, I can't believe I'm saying this, respect it. Mm, got it. And recorded. It is here in the podcast. Jaden okay, respects okay. No, no, Black no, Star. No, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I open up. To you, and that's what you do? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not cool, dude. <laughs> Not cool at all, dude. Come on now. Come on. You're better than that hot shot. Am I, though? I don't really think I am. <laughs> oh, my God. You're the, actually the worst. There's no <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I d- okay. In all seriousness, though, like, okay, yes, I did that because I absolutely could not resist because <laughs> I am never going to get that chance again. <laughs> Literally. But I applaud and respect you for actually admitting on a character that you hate so deeply. That the hate for the for Black Star for you is just so rooted that there is absolutely no saving grace for him. But you can still appreciate what kind of bond and relationship he has with Tsubaki. Like that is honestly Some all way, that I want. Well, you got it. I hope you're happy. Oh, I am. You're still not going to get me to watch Death Note. Okay, so (laughs) that was essentially it uh, for our picks. My picks were uh, 12 and Lisa, Rem and Misa. Ah, my my picks rhyme. And then I had Mikasa and Aaron. Oh, my God. Mikasa, Lisa, and Misa. They kind of all rhyme, and I didn't even realize. Huh? You did that to yourself. Yo, I'm a poet, and you don't even know it. I like to show it. I spit it on the mic because I like to get okay, it. Okay, you're literally a rapper, so that's a very distinct, unfair advantage. All right, Uh, so what were your picks? My picks were Junichi and Yukana, uh, Blackstar and Tsubaki, and Hestia <sighs> and Bell. Okay, fair enough. Uh, You said you had an announcement. I did, but I do have two quick honorable mentions I want to get through. Two couples or two individuals? Two couples. Okay, what are your two honorable mentions? So, in the beginning of this, you said Dragon Ball, Naruto, and My Hero Academia. Honestly, did you switch your list? You switched your list, I right? did not switch my list, no. Wow. Like, th- this was the list that I went into the podcast with. What I gave is what I had. But after you said wow. that, it made me think of two more that deserve recognition. Goku and Chi Chi, 18 and Krillin. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening uh, to this episode. Of no, Anime on Podcast. both counts. <laughs> All right. Can I try one more? You can try can one more. Can I get more. a hint? Can I get a hint? You can get a hint. They both have black hair. Gohan and Videl. That's actually it. Really? That is it for, for one of the picks. Yes. Okay. okay, okay. Can, I get, can I get another hint for the other one? They are both ninjas. All right. You're not going to get this one. I'm going to get this one. I'll give you three. Kakashi I'll give you three tries. And Rin. Kakashi and Rin. No. So the, are they are they from Naruto? I just said they're both from ninjas. That's going to be your only hint. Is it Cory in the house? Maybe? That's a good anime. Oh. 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 <laughs> no, okay. I'm memeing. Uh, no, okay, seriously. Um, uh, I'm going to say Sasuke. Na- uh, Sasuke. Naruto. <laughs> Sasuke Sakura. <laughs> that is not it. No. Hinata Naruto. No. Okay, go but ahead. it is from Naruto. <laughs> I'm picking Minato and Kushina. Oh my Naruto's God. parents. Yes, that. Oh man. The fourth Okage and Kushina. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes. Good picks. My picks. All right. Me, <laughs> I have one final one. Um uh from the anime called Anime Podcasters. It's called Hot Shot and Not Being on Time. Those two are just Oh, uh, they just Oh god. So well I love together. that so much. <laughs> even though nine <laughs> times out of ten I'm set up before you even think about setting okay. up. Okay. Hey, screw you! <laughs> I'm breaking right, the fourth wall here. Uh, I really this the fourth wall is the absolute is completely um, destroyed. So, uh, do you want to go through with your announcements? Plug away. Let the good people know what's good. I do want to go through. All right, guys. So, 
I've been teasing this for about 30 podcasts at this point, but... More like 40, but More like 40 or 50, probably about 54, but I actually finally have uh, the connections and everything I have in order to start up my own Let's Play channel. I am actually going to be recording shortly after we finish recording this podcast, so hopefully you guys get a Hot Shot Video Gaming uh video soon out there i'm not going to tell you what the recording or what the game is but just keep your eyes out on my channel hot shot ginger and also keep your eyes tweeted out on my twitter at caution ginger so hopefully you guys some point soon you guys will be getting a new video from me on my channel that Jaden actually has absolutely nothing to do with damn okay um that is that is quite impressive it only took me 40 plus podcasts to <laughs> <laughs> will it come out will it come out in April? Like, like just just regain me here. Will it come out in April? Probably not. Just because of my actual occupation being busy around that time. So hopefully in the beginning to mid of May. Okay. You know what? I can get down with that. I really hope I really hope. Like I've heard the song and dance. I know I you've just, heard the I song and dance, like so it. if you don't believe me, that's completely fine and valid. No no no, no. <laughs> I, I believe you. Also I wanted to get to something. Uh the Dragon Ball Z Bridge podcast we did last time. Um the was a comment left by Millennium O six and they said this and it's a question, so I wanted to, you to answer it, Hot. Alright, go. Damn. Dot dot dot. I missed it. Comma. Also, if you were to abridge DBZ, would you do the entire anime by itself or just one series like Resurrection F? So, would you abridge all of Dragon Ball like TFS or would you just do like one arc? If I could actually get a ball rolling and actually like a project that I can be proud of, I wouldn't stop at the at the one series. I would actually go the entire mile like TFS is. Okay, right on. I would just do the one because... I, so you I would just like do it's, like, it's uh, like Broly or something? Oh, I would love to see Broly or Bruce. <laughs> I already have a joke, like, meanwhile, and just, like, Frieza getting destroyed, and, like, ow, ow, <laughs> you ow, have, like, ow, Goku ow. and Vegeta go going to the space, he's getting some food. Uh, I'm, I'm such a TFS fan. Just okay. basically, like, hey, we actually got away from the fight. Why not just let Frieza fight him? <laughs> Essentially. And it's, like, a week later. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Then, like, Goten and everything. <laughs> it okay. it goes through, like, the entire Saiyan arc or the entire Cell Games arc. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, guys. All right. You, just, you got your stuff yeah, to I gotta plug. plug I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to plug my stuff. So, first of all, uh, if you are a fan of any podcasters and you enjoy the artwork, go follow at GoProKeo on Twitter. He's available for commission. He has super affordable rights, and he does amazing artwork. So he's there for animation, drawing, sketches. Go check him out. Go hit him up in the DMs. He does amazing artwork. So please go check out GoProKeo. Go give him a like on Facebook. Just go give him some love and some support. He's amazing and so talented. Uh, for myself, you can uh, f subscribe to my channel, youtube.com backslash music. Giantmusic.com is my website if you want to hire me for audio services. It's the summer for me. I'm done school. Hotshot, I'm graduating from my bachelor's degree. Woo! Congrats. Seriously, I, I thank you. I, I don't I don't really like talk about personal stuff on the podcast, but guys, I worked super hard on this bachelor's degree, and now I'm out of it and I'm going to a graduate diploma in music and film so i'm not done school yet <laughs> but anyways um so uh i'm gonna have more free time uh throughout the summer to just m make more videos you can expect two to three uh, uploads a week on my channel like i'm going i'm going ham i'm going ham i have so much content and i can so expect him to bug me more now that he's free <laughs> oh you have no idea you actually have no idea oh christ <laughs> Twitter is at Giant Music, Facebook.com backslash Giant Music for my Facebook page. And uh, you can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, where everywhere you want us to be. Go give us a five star review. It helps us reach more people. And finally, Anime Podcasters is on Facebook. So if you want a Facebook exclusive feed for just the podcast, nothing but the podcast, and everything that has to do with the podcast and Hotshots Burps, make sure to go on Facebook.com backslash Anime podcasters uh might as well plug this i'm on patreon patreon.com <laughs> i love how I you also... just d do that with such i don't care i i i it's probably the one i care the most about because like if there's like any chance of me actually doing this youtube thing full-time ever in my life as with Patreon. i know i know like, I've just, the, just your delivery when are you becoming a patron hotshot i'm a partner 
<laughs> Why do I Patreon have to become partner. a Patreon? I'm a partner in when this. It, when are you? When are you becoming a death? Uh, oh, human. Human, Death Note Real League Human Patron of Partner of Giant Music on Patreon.com. When you Giant become Music. a Black Star fanboy. Actually, if I be, if I admit right now that I'm a Black Star fanboy, would you become a patron? You need to buy the wig, you need to buy his cosplay, and you need to do a photo shoot on with you in his cosplay. Okay, you're just milking this. Yeah, this you're right. I am actually. because I know I'm not oh. going to get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, so thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of NA Podcasters. Bye, guys. Bye. Hot Chop, pick the next topic right now. Go. Hong Kong case. Okay, we're doing the Hong Kong podcast next. Bye. Bye. <laughs>